It's fair to think that when one arrives to language fully grown, some sparse body shape will be left blissfully in the dark, that one can start at another one. Perhaps I should have imagined that pleasure's not so bothered, that this body would lack most of the somatic and cultural presumptions familiar to standard bearers of a language in a country where daffodils are not so much spring flowers as wandering clouds. Indeed, how reliable with this light-headed roaming a state of cultural aphasia would one have to learn to embed the nursery rhymes, the cultural undercurrents, scaffoldings to sign and sense, create a developing infancy, a 3D speck of one's shape and skin, run through by rivers underground, always run through, or could one simply forego this one and carry on from a poetic imaginary, eerily free of white rabbits, doubled up instead between unlikely and Weed and trolls and unrecognizable French childhood songs about bridges and ladies in medieval gardens. Words or vibrations, patterns words of vibrations, words patterns of vibrations, 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 patterns I found this sort of illustration of the way broadside would historically be hung on the walls. Either they would be carried by the street seller, or they might sometimes be hung on walls. It'd be like we do now with flyers and leaflets that we just, you know, put them on walls, glue them on walls. They're made of four broadsides, and two, three of these are original texts that I've written for the show, but that are very much sitting as part of my interest in Chaucerian language and tales, and so they're quite satiric in tone. All these ballads were not good literature, so there was a whole way of disregarding them. That was reclaimed in the 19th century, because suddenly that was, you know, can we, you know, feel that these ballads are actually this sort of forgotten pool of culture in, in Britain and in England. But they were often texts that were based on, or well, they would say, based on original melodies. So it was always going to the known. They would always function through things that were already known. And then they would sort of, they would be ballads for executions. So they worked a bit like newspapers and tabloid presses and things. So because, for example, that piece here is a little bit of a call to arms, this piece, Oh Sis, and I really wanted that sense of, of having flies that you would have in demonstrations as well or whatever, but confusing the issue because they're, they're sort of a subset of those that you can see, like the Oh Sis thing, an old marching chant, but it's not advocating anything but more daring and m more fire and less corruption and things. I wanted to play with all those different dimensions of demonstration language, call to arms, tales that were used as ballads, and then the, the device that was used historically to try and circulate those pieces. And I actually didn't want these sounds to go out. I wanted that sense of people staying in with the story, that people feel the need to stay in the story because you get grabbed by the narrative quite quickly. They're written in a very strange combo hybrid English that I've invented and stolen from a number of contemporary writers. I really wanted someone who's not a foreigner to English to read it because then you hear that weird language. So you get involved in the narrative and all the, the, the dilemmas about what that language is becoming. There's obviously in those two texts a sense that civic culture, uh, civic values are at risk of corruption and violence and uh, corruption and, and degradation, if you like. And that's why this whole idea of the street literature here and this and that you can take the flies with you and you can, you know, that whole sense of a paraphernalia, which is nearly activist paraphernalia, where you are really engaging with current British culture and aspect of it with a sense of, hang on, justice, what is that now? All idea of criminalization, uh, stop and search, the foreign is still a real problem, immigration, refugees, uh, only English matters, those kinds of things, really problematic. And so these are it's embedded in the work. A sense of a culture that is fraying socially, difficulty finding new values that we can share as a society, a refusal of new values, a refusal of new communities, those kinds of things. Dame Justice does not worry unduly about all this, just asks for a top-up when needed. She's down to giving people what they deserve. No longer gives a smiling sod about the moral attributes or social benefits of equitable share out of wealth, or land, or health, or education, or how to work out well-being for the mostest, 
or the bestest ways of valuing people's skills or establishing fair and durable structures or thinking long term or facilitating technological access or revisiting the rules of international exchange or the balance of import export or the value of local trade or determining the boundaries between life and death or between breathing and unbreathing or feeling and unfeeling or animate and inanimate or animal and human or how to get out of the deep labyrinthine social, moral, spiritual, physiological bankruptcy engineered by brutal, omnipathological, so-called transnational trafficking, bloodsuck, oil-sprung, hyper-defunded, plundered a prize. Some, Some ne never had a body to call their own before it was taken away. Some had already a crop they could call their own before they were taken away. Some never had a chance to feel a body as their own before it was taken away. Some already had a crop they could call their own before they were taken away. Some never had a chance to feel a body as their own before it was taken away. Some even had a crop they could call their own before it was taken away. Some never had a chance to know their body before it was taken away. Some aldrig fick känna sin kropp för det blev revet bort. Some were never free to speak their body before it was taken up and taken away. Some même le libre corps leur est identifié, arraché. Some tried their body onto pleasure Some were never free to speak their up, body before beaten, it was taken up and taken away. Some aldrig var fri to see sin kropp when they were lifted up or revet bort. Some tried their body onto pleasure in it before it was taken up, beaten, violated, taken away. Some took sin kropp på for to nyte den for den blev lifted up, slått, kränket, revet bort. Some had their body for a time, then it too was taken away, or part of it, même si, l'ayant connu un temps, le corps arraché ou en partie. Some thought they had their body safely, then were asked to leave it behind the door, or part of it. Some had their body for a time, then it too was taken away, or part of it. From the very beginning of the process, I was interested in the issue of space. The notion of spatiality and text is very important to me. So how could I place the different elements that have made out this work into this gallery? We were trying to think of a structure that could be a trajectory in the space and at the same time could represent a sort of metaphor. So you'd have the idea of the architectural space as an outer structure for the human body, the socialized body. And then thinking about language as something that inhabits the body. So it's nearly like an inner structuring. The structure we ended up building is more like a diagram of the gallery itself. It follows the shape of the gallery. I'm always interested in this idea of suspension, lightness and weight, the fact of the mobility of a very heavy structure. It was very interesting to set up actually because these are continuous lines and we ended up having to work with the, the weights that you can see that are six kilos each. So in all it's 24 kilos that are supporting this very thin wire that you can see throughout the space. There was also this idea of the wires as poetic lines or lines like trade routes or even bloodlines. The structure itself looks a bit like an inverted cell, so there are other associations that we were trying to set up. I also like the idea of memory lines, and in fact one of the pieces that inhabit the wire structure itself is a piece called One DJ Too Many that is made up of snippets of love songs and sex songs that I remember. Good stuff, so good, love me. That's right. Wanting, needing, waiting. Ooh, ah, suck it to me like you want. Ooh, my homer jumping like this. Oh, love to love you, baby. You can ring my bell, ring my bell. Just can't get you out of my head. K. 
Can you feel this beat? It's an obsessive heartbeat. Fever in the morning, fever all through the night. Baby, let me be your fantasy. Baby, this Baby, constant this craving was the matter, daddy. Soothe me, I want some sugar in my bowl. Kiss the boot of shiny, shiny leather. Shiny leather in the dark. I'm not a woman, I'm not a man, I'm something you can't comprehend, I'm a threshold yearning to sing, you can feel it in the air, breathe to the rhythm, dance to the rhythm, Work the rhythm, live to the rhythm, love to the rhythm, like the surge of the wave, and me the naked island, oh yes, I love you, me either. Subtitle Wired Madeleine because I was thinking about the Proustian sensory jolt, the way when he eats that little Madeleine, it he remembers his childhood. And the same thing that whenever we come into a shop or a car and then suddenly you hear a song, it, it often jolts you back to all sorts of things.